Stardom has really only been around for eight years, and yet they feel like they've been around forever. With most of their videos before 2016 not being available online, and even the ones that are aren't subtitled, it feels like a different era. I feel like Stardom has two histories, and I've kind of given them names just for my own personal use. The before 2016 I call the pre-translation era. Everything that happened before the website got created and all of the shows were subtitled. And then I call everything after that the modern era. So technically the modern era has only been going on for about three years now, with the rest of it being in the pre-translation era. With them having so much history and so many belts, it's only natural that every now and then someone would be able to carry more than one. And I got curious after hearing the news of Utami Hayashishita's win of the future belt, how many dual champions are there in stardom? Now, a dual champion is anyone who has held more than one belt at the same time. It doesn't always have to be a singles belt. It can be a multi-belt and a singles belt or two multi-belts at the same time. So, I spent all day creating a visual representation of all of the belt holders when and which belt. Because I can't really just look at data, like numbers, and visualize it. So I kind of had to spend literally an entire day making that. Just so I can get the info correct for you guys. I thought it would be about five maybe ten if you were pushing it people but i was actually very surprised to find out that there are 15 dual champions from stardom with three of them actually being triple champions and of course there is one quadruple champion that means they held four belts at one time i bet everyone can guess who that was and, of course, the quadruple champion was actually Stardom's only Grand Slam champion. And if you don't know what a Grand Slam champion is, I don't even know if that's a technical phrase for it, but to me, a Grand Slam champion is someone who has held every belt that they are eligible for in Stardom. Now, many of these people, the amount of times they became dual champions is ridiculous. And I counted these in a way that Say they had two belts, and then got a third belt, making them go from a dual champion to a triple champion. And then they lost that third belt before losing the other two, going back to a dual champion. Now, to me, I counted that as them being a three-time dual champion or more. I can see why some people would only count it as two, since the original two belts never changed, but I'm not doing it that way, so... So, I will go over the large list of everyone who has ever been a dual champion in stardom. I'm not going to be doing these in any particular order, except I'm going to be going by dual champions, then triple champions, then the quadruple champion slash grand slam champion. And, of course, the first person in the dual champion list is actually going to be stardom's first ever dual champion. After that, it's just whoever I was able to figure out was a dual champion, you know, in that order. All right, so the first ever dual champion for stardom is none other than Yuzuki Aikawa, also known as Yuzapan. The Gravier model that was one of the biggest idols at the time, and she could be argued to be the reason why stardom got so popular. Although, she has only held two belts in her career and it was at the same time. The two belts she held at the same time were the White Belt and the Goddesses of Stardom belts. Now, she is actually also holding the accolade of being the first ever holder of both of those belts. So, she's got a lot of status behind her name. Next on the list is someone who's not actually signed to Stardom and is still wrestling there today, Kaori Yoniyama. The two belts that she held at the same time were one of the Artists of Stardom belts and the High Speed belt. Next on the list is someone who retired many years ago, Miho Yakazawa. The two belts that she held at the same time were one of the Artists of Stardom belts and one of the Goddesses of Stardom belts. Next person on the list is Kairi Hojo, and some of you might be pretty surprised 
that Kyrie is not a triple champion. She has never once in stardom held three belts at the same time. There was a small window in her career where she almost was, but she lost the belt, one of the belts, a few days before getting the other one. Even though she has never been a triple champion, she is five-time dual champion, making her third place in total number of dual champion held, which is pretty amazing. Now, for most of these people, I'm going to be able to just read them off by memory because they didn't win that many belts. But for some of them, I'm going to be super unprofessional and read it straight from the, not the script, but something I used to help me. So, the belts Kyrie held, and I believe in the order that her dual champions has happened is starting with the goddesses of stardom belt and the red belt at the same time then the red belt and artist belt at the same time then the artists of stardom belt and the white belt at the same time which then transitions into the white belt and the goddesses belt at the same time finally ending with the white belt and the artist belt at the same time next on this list is koguma the youngest person on this list a lot of people were wondering if Momo was the youngest dual champion ever, spoilers, she's a dual champion, when she won the Goddesses of Stardom belts while holding the white belt. Unfortunately, she is not. Uh, they gave that honor to someone who ended up quitting shortly after. The belts she held were the High Speed belt and the Artists of Stardom belt at the same time. Next on the list is our current red belt champion, Kagetsu. Even though she is so great, she has only been a dual champion one time. And that was not even with her red belt. She held both the Goddesses of Stardom belt and the Artist belt at the same time. And if she doesn't retire this year, she could potentially become another dual champion. Next on this list is Jungle Kiona. Another person who had to use both tag team belts or triple belts to become a dual champion. She held the Goddesses of Stardom Belt and the Artists of Stardom Belt at the same time, which is a shame because if anybody in the roster deserved to have one reign as a singles belt holder, it's Jungle. Next on this list, achieved her dual champion status the same time as Jungle, since she was her partner for both of them. It was Hiroyo Matsumoto, and of course, she held both the Artists of Stardom Belt and the Goddesses of Stardom Belt at the same time. The big sister of Queen's Quest, Viper, is also on this list and making her one of the two foreigners that grace this list. She held both the Artists of Stardom belt and the SWA belt at the same time. The other foreigner on this list is of course Tony Storm, but unlike Viper, this one was never planned to actually happen, because her winning her red belt was actually the cause of Mayu getting injured, an unplanned event. So, the two belts she held were the SWA belt and the red belt at the same time. Next on this list, and one of two current day dual champions, is Momo Watanabe. Of course, everyone knows, since it's happening right now in present day, that the two belts she is holding is the White Belt and the Goddesses Belt. And of course, that transitions into the other current day dual champion, which is Utami Hayashishita, her actual partner for the Goddesses Belt. With Utami Hayashishita holding both the Goddesses Belt and now the future of Stardom Belt at the same time. Now, while there are three people who technically qualify as triple champions in Stardom, one of those people actually transcend that, so for this category, there is only going to be two people in it. The first person is someone who is no longer wrestling for Stardom, but is a legend in her own way, Natsuki Tayo. If you do not know who she is, please look up some of her matches, because she is amazing. She is one of the best high-speed high-flyers in Joshi Wrestling's history. She is absolutely amazing. The belts that she has held were the high-speed belt and the goddesses belt at the same time. Then, the high-speed belt, the goddesses belt, and the artist belt at the same time. And then, the goddesses belt and the high-speed belt once again. She's actually in fourth place for total number of dual championships. Next is someone very important to not only the history of stardom, but stardom to this day, Mayu Iwatani. If she was not on this list, I honestly would have been considering it criminal. She has given so much to stardom and is so important to stardom that she deserves every accolade that she can get in stardom before she retires. 
Even though she has spent most of her career in the shadow of Kairi Hojo, now Kairi Sane, and Io Shirai, there is one special label she has that neither one of them have ever gotten and now will never get. And that is, she was the first person ever in the history of stardom to hold both the red belt and the white belt at the same time. Now, because she is the second place for total number of dual champions, I'm going to have to read her list again. But what makes this special is that she has the potential to become first place since she's still going strong in the company to this day and number one left a while ago. The belts that she held and in, in what order? The white belt and the artist belt, then the white belt and artist belt again, then the goddesses of stardom belt with the high speed belt, then the goddesses of stardom belts with the artist belts and the high speed belt, then the artist belts with the high speed belt, and then of course the red and white belt at the same time. Now, there is only one quadruple champion, and I believe all of us can guess who it is. If you were not able to guess in the beginning, it should be super obvious now, since if her name was not on this list, it would not make sense. Io Shirai is not only the first place in total number of dual champions, she is also the company's only ever quadruple champion and Grand Slam champion. Her list is very long and complicated thanks to a total of eight months during 2017 that I'm sure a lot of you probably remember where the Artist of Stardom belt was juggled around like a hot potato. Now, this one is probably going to take a while, and I definitely need this one for this because I would never be able to remember this. All right, so Io Shirai's dual champions and in order. The Artist of Stardom belt with the high speed belt. The white belt with the goddess belt. The red belt with the goddess belt. The red belt with the goddess belt and artist belt. The red belt with the goddess belt, the artist belt, and the SWA belt. The red belt with the artist belt and the SWA belt. The red belt and artist belt. Then the red belt and artist belt again. Then the red belt and artist belt again. And then the red belt and artist belt again. And then finally leaving off with the artist belt and the white belt. Now, trust me, I rechecked this like four or five times just to make sure I wasn't miscounting how many times she lost and gained back the artist belt during her white belt reign. That is true. She had it four separate times during her white belt run. That was a great time. <laughs> The status of Grand Slam Champion is going to get pretty iffy now with the inclusion of the Future Belt. And I personally feel that anybody who was not able to get it when it was introduced should not be penalized for not being able to get it for the Grand Slam Champion. Now, Io Shirai was, had way more than two years of experience and was not 20 or under while it was introduced. So... Just like how men are not penalized for not getting the women's championships and other promotions, I don't feel someone who was unable to get this belt should be penalized from being a Grand Slam champion. Unfortunately, the wording was a little confusing when I was trying to look up the rules for the future belt. It states two years, less than two years of experience or under 20 years old. Now, if that means you have to be 19 or younger, to be eligible for the belt, then some people still have a chance of becoming Grand Slam champions. If you can still get it while you're 20, then that means certain people like Hazuki is locked out of being a Grand Slam champion for the rest of her career. And even though there is only one current Grand Slam champion, Iyu Shirai, there are actually two people who were very close to achieving this goal, Kairi Hojo and Mayu Iwatani. Now, Kairi Hojo only needed the SWA belt and the high speed belt, while Mayu actually only needs the SWA belt to become a Grand Slam champion. And since her career isn't over and could go on for many years, it could happen. Now, out of everyone in stardom right now, who is actually in line to become a Grand Slam champion? If you look at it, all of the main players could very well potentially hold both the white or the red belt one day. So, 
Hazuki, Momo, Starlight Kid, Azumi, Utami, Jungle, you know, Natsuko, Tam, people like that. But you have to take into consideration what I said before about the future belt. Now, technically, Momo either has one to two more years to get that belt, but is she ever going to challenge for it? That's the problem. Because she is so high up on the ranking, it would almost be laughable for her to lower herself to go after this belt. And that could be damaging towards her career because she could lock herself out from ever being a Grand Slam champion. Now, some might think, well, once you're ineligible to get it, then it shouldn't count towards you. But I feel like that's a cop-out. If you were eligible to get it at one point, you should have to count it. And the whole 20 years thing that I explained with Suzuki... If anybody knows a definitive answer of whether you have to be 19 and under or 20 and under, please, please let me know because uh, I actually don't want her to have to be locked out because I believe she could potentially be one one day. So with that said, out of all of the people right now, there are three people I believe have a lot of potential of becoming Grand Slam champions in the future. One is Utami Hayashishita. Just because that's kind of what the storyline is right now for her. She wants to get all the belts. She has two down and the, the pesky future one's out of the way now. The other two are Starlight Kid and Azumi. Starlight Kid because she already has the, star, uh, the future belt out of the way. And Azumi because she she's just amazing. So I can't see her taking any path in her career other than what Io did and just being on top. I always think things like this are very interesting. I love seeing stats and statistics and learning did you know trivia. Let me know if you guys like things like this as much as I do because I would love to start doing more things like this, like interesting facts, you know, videos. Let me know in the comments whether you think the future belt should count for people once they're past the age of being able to get it or if Hazuki should be locked out. Bye.